Well, traditionally pathologists have communicated in a written format, so most of our uh, reporting is with written reports. And they have challenges uh, in a number of respects. The first is that when you write a report, you can try to be very detailed, but you never know how the report is being received by the audience, which in our case is the treating clinician. So it can be really difficult to know what they're extracting from the report and whether the information is complete and um, is available to them in a format that they understand. So that the written report can be a challenge just on its own. Um, for critical value communications, we normally like to do those in a verbal format. Uh, the challenge there is that um, with very complex medical systems these days, it can be very difficult to chase down the appropriate treating clinician. Uh, trying to find them by phone can be really challenging to give them a verbal report and then to make sure that they've understood that. So recently, uh, some of the more modern modalities are being used things like uh, texting for uh, critical value results or, well not tweeting, we hope nobody's tweeting critical value results, but texting has its own set of challenges, again because unless you know that the uh, treating clinician has received that text, you don't know how they're interpreting the information. And then additionally, you need to make sure that any uh, patient information is safe and secure and that their personal information isn't available. So you need to make sure any device that you use um, to give information regarding patients is encrypted and is HIPAA compliant. Well, I advocate for the pathology team to actually talk directly with the treating clinicians to understand really fully what it is that they require in the form of a report or a written communication. We have our own biases about what, um, what we think that they should know, but it's really good to take the next step and make sure that you talk to them about the details of what they need for, their, uh, for, for treating patients. Um, their treatment guidelines change, and often they need information that isn't readily available in our reports. So, I think the best thing that we can do to improve our communication is make sure that we have really good rapport with the customer, um, which in this case is the treating clinician. So errors, either serious or minor errors, are the most difficult of all communication, uh, very emotionally charged. Uh, and I uh, really firmly believe that Actually, residents and trainees should not be responsible for communicating errors on their own. Um, when you get to the uh, serious error communication, that needs to be an attending to attending conversation. If the resident um, happens to be the person that finds an error, I think they need to bring that to the attention of a senior level pathologist. Um, it would be really great for residents to be involved in error disclosure, um, but I don't think that they should be responsible for that disclosure. Um, there are a number of things that patients and treating clinicians who have suffered as a result of pathology error expect. So there's been a number of studies in the literature regarding the expectations of error disclosure, and it's pretty remarkable. It's very consistent. Um, there's really a good consensus about what people need. They need an accurate and complete description of what occurred. Um, they need to know why the error happened, um, pitched to the level that they can understand. They need to know what can be done or what is being done to ensure that a similar error won't occur in the future. Um, they also need to have an apology. Um, which in the case of a serious error needs to be a sincere and frank apology um, that they suffered harm because of a pathology error.